Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here on African Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it comes from a translation of a message that I received. The translation of that message reads like this. Hello, how are you? Can you please post my own story as anon? Maybe no one will understand, but I might sound as if I am a woman who is heartless, but sometimes... I just feel like I am tired. I am tired of the life that I am living. I am done pretending. I do not want to do this anymore. It is just that I want someone to give me courage so that I can return back home. I am tired of looking in the mirror, of seeing a face that looks so much like mine, but I feel like a total stranger to myself. I am tired of hiding behind all of these designer bags and perfectly filtered Instagram posts pretending that I have got it all figured it out. I used to think that I was living my best life, but now I don't know what exactly am I living for. It was not always like this. I still remember the day that my life changed, the moment that everything shifted. I had gone to Santon and I was at this other place with this other friend of mine. So I knew that my friend, she was into dating, only, only she dated foreign guys. That was when she introduced me to the guy that I will call T. He was a wealthy man who was from Zim, who just wanted to have like sort of an unofficial second wife who had to be South African. And I was the one whom he had chosen. He was one of those guys who had came from nothing but built himself an empire. He was into gold buying and gold selling. For the first time that I saw real gold, I was really amazed at how it felt and how gold looks like in real life. And this guy, he was really amazing. That is what drew me to him. He was never stingy. He was always there for me. And at that time when we first met, he then told me that he wanted a girl like me out of Port Elizabeth, where I grew up in. And he said that he wanted to make me to become an independent woman, to have my own place. Brother Nashi, and officially, let me say, we got married quickly. He swept me off my feet like one of those love stories, even though it was an unofficial marriage but we did everything, the photo shoot, that most of the people, they think that I really got married, but it was just for the show. He said that he was going to sort out things with his wife back in Zim, and after, after that we were going to have an official wedding, an official ceremony. As for my parents, they did not complain when he explained it to, to them that he needed to get permission first from the first wife so that he can marry me at least he was giving me a lot of money and he was also taking care of them from there on that was when we moved in together we were staying together and the man he was taking care of me i was never that outgoing person but i needed to adjust really fast he told me T introduced me to a world that i did not even know existed i remember the first time that he took me to an all-white party. Everyone was dripping in designer clothes, Versace, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, and sipping champagne like it was water. Those parties, they were wild, like nothing that I had ever seen before. Like there were models there, rich men from across Africa, and women like me who just wanted to stay in the good books of the men who had made all of this possible. All those parties, I felt like I was somebody. I felt like I mattered, like I was finally living the life. Life, I can say, for a moment, it was totally great. But you know what they say, be careful for what you wish for. It did not take long for the cracks to show. T started showing me his true colors. I once saw some messages of this other girl on his WhatsApp. So he had been soliciting a threesome with another girl from another province. And the girl... He had told him it was fine if only he could give her what she wanted in terms of money and the brand new iPhone. I was totally hurt. And one thing that I noticed was that when a man is wealthy enough, there is nothing, nothing you can do about it. 
So I confronted him. All that he did was that he took me to a dealership. When we went to that dealership, he spoiled me with a new car and he said that he was sorry. Eventually, I had had enough of his cheating ways. I packed my things and I walked out. I thought that now I could make it on my own because I had my other circle of friends who were also slay queens that I had met when he would take me to different parties. But it turned out that life without tea was not as simple as I thought. I was no longer that girl who did not know how to play the game though. I had learned to survive, to adapt. That is how I ended up being here in Dubai. It was not my plan as such. It was more of a desperate move. I thought that if I went far enough with this other blesser, it was going to be easy because he told me that Dubai is full of opportunities for women like me. So he said that he knew a couple of rich men that were looking for new pretty faces to keep them company. And then that was when I came here to Dubai. When I started staying here in bed, I was making so much money, so much that I would be sending my parents money back home. Then I remember the night that everything changed when I was sure that I am a nobody and I was sitting in a penthouse suit in one of Dubai's finest hotels looking out over the city lights when this other guy an older black man he came a billionaire type the man had so much money and he wanted me to be with him he offered me a couple of thousand of dollars more than that i had ever seen all at once well the catch was that he wanted me to eat something that no human being should eat he wanted me to eat poo at first i laughed thinking that it was a joke but when I looked at him, I saw that he was dead serious. I said no. I walked out that night feeling like I had a bit of my pride left. But two weeks later, I was back because my hotel bill was overdue. The rent for my kids' place back in Port Elizabeth still had not been paid for. I did what I had to do. The man went to the bathroom with a small container and he came back holding that container that had poo and he said that he wanted to watch me eating that poo. I stripped myself only a g-string remaining as I was eating. He then started masturbating the guy as if this was normal and then I finished eating that thing. It was not nice at all. I went into the bathroom where I cried myself to death. The next morning the guy gave me a lot of money. I was able to settle my bills. This is the place where I am still staying right now. But here in Dubai, I feel like I am something that is disposable. Most of the men here, they treat you in a way that makes you to feel like you are not a real human being. Slavery. They say that slavery ended. No, slavery, it is still alive. Most of the women that are here in Dubai, they are just modern day slaves. You can see someone on Instagram slaying, but I have seen women that are so desperate, so desperate to do anything. I have a few of my women friends that are from Ghana and Nigeria. Those women are willing to do anything just for money. Some of the things that I can never think of doing, it's scary out here. But at the same time, we have to survive. Dear listeners, right there was a message that was sent to me by one of our um, admin who gave us this translation. Strange things indeed they do happen in this world.